and welcome to the session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we're going to be looking at sale of residence and specifically Section 121, 121 exclusion. This topic is covered in an income tax course, the CPA regulation section, as well as the enrolled agent exam. As always, I would, I would like to remind you, my viewers, is to connect with me on a professional level, such as LinkedIn, as well as Facebook. If you have a Facebook page, please like my Facebook page. You can connect with me also on a personal level. Oh, I want to make sure you subscribe to my YouTube. This is where I house all my lectures. Please, if you like my lectures, please like them, share them with others, put them in playlists so other people would benefit. This is my Twitter account, and I do have a website where I organize my lectures by chapter and course. If you are watching this recording, it means you are either an accounting student or you are studying for the CPA exam. I would like to let you know that this recording is brought to you by Jaeger CPA Review. So if you like this recording, on Jaeger CPA Review, you can view hundreds of hours of video lectures, solve thousands of multiple choice questions with detailed solution. Jaeger CPA follows the blueprint, which is the CPA requirement for the exam. You have simulations, textbook, audio lectures, as I mentioned, the blueprint integration, electronic flashcards, plus others. If you decided to go with Jaeger, you could use my code PMF, you will get 15% off of the best valued course. You will benefit yourself and benefit this channel. So let's start by talking about the general rules about sale of residence. Now, remember, a residence is a personal property. Where you live, that's your personal asset. What does that mean? Well, what we learned is loss on sale, when you, when you sell a personal use asset, which is a residency, just like with all other personal use assets, all realized loss on the sale, is not recognized, is not deductible. So the rules for the loss does not change. So everything that we learn about personal use asset, asset that you use for personal use, guess what? You sell them, you sell your personal car, you get a loss, you sell your furniture, your personal furniture, you get a loss, you sell your personal computer, you get a loss. Those losses are not recognizable. They are not deductible, period. And for the residents, that's no different. Okay? Now what's different is gain on the sale. Realized gain, on the sale is subject to, tax to taxation. Just like so far, so good. This is what we learned. Any personal use asset, if there's a gain, we realize, we, re we the gain realized is recognized. Except for the sale of residence, as long as it meets certain requirements, which we'll discuss in this session, it will be partly or wholly excluded under section 121. So under section 121, when you have a gain, on a personal use asset and specifically your residence where you live, then you, you might be able to exclude part of the gain or the whole gain. So section 121 exclusion provide up to $250,000 of gain on the sale of a principal residence. So simply put, if you sell your home and you meet certain requirements, which we will discuss, you could exclude up to $250,000, okay? Now you must own the home uh, for, at least two years for the past five years by the time of the by the time of the sale and we'll talk a little bit more about the requirements a little bit more in details the amount of exclusion as we said it's 250 this is assuming you are single now if you are married filing jointly you will you could exclude up to half a million which we'll talk about that later realized gate is computed the normal manner what do i mean by the normal manner it's you will take your amount realized or amount, the amount that you received minus the adjusted basis, okay? Or consideration received minus the adjusted basis. That's what that's that's what gonna give us the realized gain. So it's computed in the normal manner. However, you can deduct from amount realized, from amount realized, you can deduct selling expenses such as advertising, broker's commission, and legal fees that are related to the transaction. Fixing up expenses is not part of the selling expense. So before, before you sell your house, you may paint it, you may fix certain items um, that are broken, not working properly. Those are not expenses that you can deduct from the amount realized. So those are not deductible. For a married couple filing jointly, you can exclude up to half a million, and we'll talk about this later on. A surviving spouse can continue to use the half a million exclusion amount on the sale of a personal residence for two years following the year of the deceased spouse. So if you are a surviving spouse, you are considered a surviving spouse, you could exclude up to half a million for the following two years. 
Let's look at an example to see exactly how this works. Mandy, who's single, sell, sells her personal residence, adjusted basis 130 for 290. She has owned and lived in the residence for three years, so that's good. Three years means in the past five years, she lived three, she lived at least two, so she qualifies. Her selling expenses were 18,000. Three weeks prior to the sale, Mandy paid a carpenter and a painter $1,000 to make some repair and paint the two bathroom. Guess what? We don't, we, we, we ignore those. Her recognized gain is computed as follow. 290 minus the selling expenses, which is amount realized or consideration received, 272, minus the adjusted basis gives her a realized gain of 142. Then from the realized gain, remember, she can exclude up to $250,000. She's going to exclude the whole thing, 142. Okay, so how much of her taxes is uh, how much of her gain is recognized? And the answer is nothing, because under Section 121, her realized gain is excluded. And by the way, this gain is not deferred. In other words, she's not going to have to pay taxes on it later. This is tax-free. This is tax-free. Simply put, it's tax-free transaction. There is no taxes, no gain postponement, nothing. Okay. So if she buys a new house, whatever she pays for that new house, that's her basis. Assume the fact, as in the previous example, uh, but the selling price was 490. So 490 minus the selling expenses gives us amount received, amount realized or consideration received 472, minus the adjusted basis gives us a gain of 342. Now the gain is 342 more than two, the excluded amount 250. Therefore, we can only execute 250, and this amount 92, this is taxable. This is taxable, okay? So this is taxable or recognized, whatever you want to talk about. Now let's talk about Section 121 requirement because I did not really discuss the requirements specifically, okay? For one thing, the, you, have to, you be, have to be selling your principal residence and only you are considered to have one principal residence. So as a taxpayer, you could own more than one home, but you only have one principal residence. And how do we determine what's your principal residence? It's where the taxpayer resides most of the time. So you're going to reside most of the time in one specific location. That specific location is your person, principal residence. So when you sell your principal residence, this is where Section 121 applies. Okay, you, can, you, you might have five different homes. Only one place is your principal residence. And you have, to make, you have to meet three tests. The first one is the ownership test. What is the ownership test? Obviously, you have to own the property for at least greater than or equal to two years in the past five years. So you look at the past five years and you have to have to own the property the two of the past five years prior preceding the sale. Usage test. You must use the principal residence at least greater, greater than or equal to two years during the five preceding years. So during the five preceding years you have to have lived there at least two of the past five years. It doesn't have to be the last two, two in the past five years. Frequency test, section 121 exclusion can only be used once every two years. Okay, in other words, you cannot buy a home, sell it, get the exclusion, buy a, ho buy a home again, sell it, get the exclusion. So you have to wait two years in order to get the exclusion again. You can buy a home again, but if you sell it, you will not be able to exclude that 250 or half a million depending on your filing status. Okay, so those are the three tests that you have to meet. Let's take a look at a few examples to see how this is applied. Sarah purchased a home in San Diego, May 2003. So let's just see, this is 2003 and this is sometime in May. And lived there until she took a new job in Los Angeles, January 1st, 2014. Okay, so she lived there until 2014. Okay, all this period. From January 2014 until she sold the house on July 31st, 2018. Then, from January 1st, 2014 until a few years later, in 2018, July 2018, she only used the home occasionally as she lived in an apartment near her job in downtown LA. As the house was sold July 31st, 2018. Okay, so see well, let's look what happened. She basically moved out here. So 2014, she was not in the house. 2015, she was not in the, she's not considered her principal residence. 2016, the same thing. 2017, and all the way up to 2018. So notice, if we look, 
look, as the house was sold July 31st, the five-year window runs out August 1st, 2013, to the date of the sale. So what's going to happen is this. <clears throat> the five-year window runs from August 1st, 2013. Why August 1st, 2013? She sold the house, okay? Um, I'm sorry. Uh, she sold the house July 31st, 2018. So from July 31st, we have to go back five years. And if we go back five years, the date that we count is August 1st, 2013. So this is the five-year period. Now, we have to look at this five-year period and determine if she lived there two years of the past five years. So here's what we're looking at here. And let, let me put this in a different color. So this is... This is August 1st, 2013. So notice, she lived only in the past five years from the date of the sale. So this is the whole period. This is the day, this is the this is the five year period. Okay? She did not live there two years. She lived there from August till January. From August, because we have to look five years from the date of the sale. She failed that test. Okay? In determining whether section 121 X exclusion is available, Sarah must have met has met the ownership test she owned the home that's not a problem because she owned the home for the path for two of of the five year prior to the sale she did she did own the home however she failed the use test she did not use the home the property two of the past five years okay so she considered to have used the property from august 2013 till january 1st 2014. why did we use august we look at the date of the sale and we go back five years and during that five years, did she live there two years? And she did not because she moved out and she went there and she lived occasionally. Therefore, she meet the ownership test. She did not meet the usage test. Therefore, she doesn't qualify. Let's look at Charles. Charles lives in a townhouse that he rents from 2011 through to January 17, 2015. On January 18, 2015, he purchased the townhouse. So... Let's take a look at, let me go back here and do a timeline. <clears throat> so this is 2015 and early 2015, he bought the house. On February 1st, 2016, approximately a year later, due to decline in health, Charles moved into his daughter's home. Okay, so he moved out someplace in here. Okay, and May 2018, which is, you know, this is 2016. So approximately two years later, approximately two years later, 2018, um, while still living in his daughter's house, he sold, he sold the house. Now in this situation, section 121 will apply because Charles owned the townhouse at least two out of the past five years preceding the sale. He did own the house from January 19th, 2015, until May, until May 25th, 2018, okay, he owned it, and he used the townhouse as his principal residence for at least two years during the five-year period preceding the house. And what we count here is from May 25th, 2013, okay, the beginning of the five-year window. So he was living there. Notice he did not own it at that time. He did not buy the house until 2015, but we look at the date of the sale and we move back five years. Did he, was he using the property two of the past five years? And yes, he was living there. He was renting. He was living there. Okay? So he was living there. So if you were living there, then you bought the house. It will be counted because that's the usage test. So the, he did own the home two of the past five years before the sale. He did live there two of the past five years since the date, of, as of the date of the sale. Okay? And obviously he met the third test because he did not use section 121 before. Let's look at another example. Aaron, let's look at Aaron. Aaron has owned and used his house as his principal residence since 2002. On January 1st, 2015, Aaron moves to another state. Aaron rents his house to tenant from, from that date till April 2017. So, so this is 2002. This is, this is when, he, when he used the house. January 31st, 2015, moved out. Okay, this is January 31st. Then he, then he rented the place 
all of 20 the remaining of 2015 all of 2016 and up until april 2017 so all this period this was rental this was rental is he eligible for section 121 so what we do is we we look at the date of the sale the date of the sale is april 18 2017 and we look back five years five years will be april 18 2012 okay so notice did he own the home yes he was the owner when the home was sold did he use the home two years of the past five years well guess what so let's see this is 2014 this is 2013 I don't, even, I, don't, I don't even have to go back even to 2012. So notice, this is one, two, three, four. Basically, this is a partial year. This is one full year, two, three, four. So notice, in the past five years, he did use the home at least two years. Okay? It doesn't have to be the last two years. He did use it at least two years of the past five years. So yes, he qualifies. He qualifies for Section 121. Okay? He did own the home, and he lived there two of the past five years preceding the sale. Although he rented this property before he sold it, but he still met that two-year usage test within the past five years preceding the sale. It doesn't have to be the last two years exactly. It doesn't have to be the last two years exactly. Okay, Let's look at this example. Mike sells his principal residence, his, his first residence, in June, seven, in June 17 for 150000 realized gain of 60000 He then buys the following property okay so then he purchased on july 27th after he sold his fir first residency he bought another residency for 160 april 2018 which is less than two years sold it for 180 guess what no section 121 then he bought a residence for 200,000 may 18. now if he wants once he if he wants to get the exclusion for this third residence he have to live there Okay, at least till May 2020. Own it and live there till May 2020. And this way he's two years away from, uh, well, doesn't have to be two years actually. Yeah, he have to live there. He have to live there, the usage test. He have to, to meet the usage test at least two years of the past, in the past five years. Then starting May 2020, if he sells it, then he might be able to get the exclusion again on the third residence. But the second residence, no way he's going to get the exclusion because he did not qualify. Now, married couple. Now, we talked about married couple. Remember, we said if you are filing married, filing, filing married jointly, married filing jointly, you have you could exclude up to half a million. So rather than two fifty up to half a million, assuming you meet the following requirement, either spouse meet the two-year ownership test so if you and your spouse only one of you has to own the home in the past in the past two of the past five years only one person but both spouses have to meet the two-year use requirement so both you have both have to live there two years for the requirement test and obviously neither spouse is el ineligible due to the sale of another principal residence in the prior two years so if either spouse already get the section 121 exclusion in the past two years then you can do it okay let's take a look at an example margaret sells her personal residence adjusted basis 150 for 650 she has owned and lived in the residence in the past six years okay her, uh, her selling expenses are 40,000. Margaret is married to Ted and they file a joint return. Ted has lived in the residence since they were married, which is two and a half years ago, which is good. So they met the usage test. Obviously, the ownership is ownership test. Margaret owned the place two years, so that's good. The usage test is met because Ted lived there and they told us they did not sell either, either, either of them took Section 121 exclusion prior to the sale. Therefore, they qualify for half a million. So amount realized, 610, which is the selling price minus the uh, selling expenses. Adjusted basis, 150. They have a good gain, 460,000. None of it is taxable. And by the way, just FYI, if you're interested, really President Clinton pushed for this exclusion to make it, to make it uh, this high. Just, just FYI. So notice none of the gain is taxable none of the gain is taxable 
waiver for section 121 under certain circumstances under certain circumstances usage frequency ownership test usage usage test and frequency test are waived okay one change in place of employment not if you chose to leave if your company assigned you to another location and you don't have a choice then you might be able to waive you have you might have a waiver for section 121 so you might be able to section 121 although you don't meet the ownership the frequency and the usage test health reasons now there's a list of health reasons unforeseen circumstances again there's a list of un unforeseen circumstances and anything specified by the u.s treasury regulation which it dealt, talks about the unforeseen circumstances there's a list of unforeseen circumstances just know that under certain circumstances although you don't meet the ownership usage and the frequency test you might be able to exclude some some of the gain under section 121 okay so under these circumstances assuming you meet any of these only a portion of the exclusion is available and this is how you would compute it the maximum exclusion amount which is whatever that exclusion could be 250 could be half a million depending if you are married or filing single multiply the number of qualifying month divided by 24 which is two year period now what is what is the number of qualifying month what's this denominator how do we compute number of qualifying month we take the lesser of the period during ownership and usage test are met so we take the ownership and usage test when did you own it and how long you lived there or the period between between the prior sale and the current sale whichever is lesser of these two you count those two the lesser of these two what goes in the numerator the denominator is 24 month it's fixed in a sense it's always fixed because it's a two-year period therefore you cannot meet uh you have to be there at least two years therefore if you're not if you're less than two years we're going to give you some exclusion well if you are there one year that's you're going to get 50 percent which is 12 million okay let's take a look at an example october 1st rich and audrey who filed a joint return and lived in chicago sell their personal residence which they had have owned and lived there for eight years the realized gain is 325 is excluded under section 121 so all is good october 1st they sold the home they got the gain they put that money in the bank they didn't pay any taxes everything is good they purchase another personal residence for 525 october 2nd so the sec the following day okay and this is you know this is really unrealistic but a lot of people try to do so when i sold my house it took me like a month uh, two months to close okay but they were very lucky so they timed it very well they sold one house bought the other this is in 2017 so they they bought it october 2nd audrey employer transferred her to denver office august 2018 so guess what they lived there the remainder of 2017 and all the way till august august of 2018 here they transfer so they own the home from this period to this period okay she was transferred to denver rick and audrey sell their chicago residence on august 2nd so they sold the residency here so they own it during this period and they purchased a residence in denver shortly thereafter the realized gain on the sale wow a whopping three hundred thousand. just this is a little bit unrealistic that they made three hundred thousand dollar gain but who cares um you know this is uh it's, it, it could happen actually at some point the real estate uh, market was that crazy but it doesn't matter notice the three hundred and twenty five thousand dollar gain on the first chicago residence is excluded we already talked about this that the first home is totally excluded from taxes the sale of the second home in uh, is within the two-year window of the prior sale so notice the second home they have a gain of three hundred thousand can they exclude how much can they exclude of the gain well they're going to take the realized gain multiply by I'm, I'm sorry i made a mistake here the maximum exclusion amount is what was you know what was not, not 250 or half a million whatever your gain is whatever your uh, no actually it is half a million depending on you know the maximum exclusion in their situation is half a million so we're gonna take let's go back here just forget what what i just said okay so the re oh, sorry the realized gain is three hundred thousand what's going to happen is this <clears throat> how much are we going to exclude we're we well we're going to take what they qualify for which is half a million half a million that's how much they qualify for if they waited two years so we're going to multiply this by how long they live there well they live there october november december of 2017 january february march 
April, May, June, July, uh, July, that's it. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's seven months plus three. See, they lived there 10 months. So that's the, from the prior sale, that's, that's the prior sale and the usage are the same, divided by 24, okay? So let's do this computation here. So we're going to take 10 divided by 24, whoops, 10 divided by 24, multiply this by half a million. They can exclude $208,333. So of the 300,000, they can exclude, still good, 208, 333,000. So the amount they're going to recognize is 91,667. This is the taxable amount. Not bad. So again, they had another transaction and they were able to exclude the majority of it, 208,000. Okay. And this is the computation that I just made. Okay. So that's still not, not bad at all. Not bad at all. Okay. Sale of residence effect of renting. So what happened if you rented the property? Well, we already know that if you rent the property, you could still qualify, okay? The renting of the taxpayer residence prior to the sale does not affect the qualifying for Section 121 as long as the ownership and occupancy requirement are satisfied. And those are two of the past five years, okay? The residence does, thus does not have to be the principal resident on the date of the sale. I kept saying this, but this is clearly in, in front of you. You don't have to, to be there the date of the sale, as long as you live two of the past five years, okay? What's the negative effect of renting? Any realized gain that's attributable to depreciation is not eligible for Section 121 exclusion. So simply put, if you rented the property and you, if you depreciated the property, guess what? The depreciation amount will have to be recaptured with something we need to talk about later on in another session. Benjamin sells his formal principal residence on August 16, 2018. He had purchased it on, on April 1st, 2010, and lived there till July. So he lived there till July, okay? Then he sold it in August when he converted to rental properties. From July till August, it was rental. During that period, it was rental. It doesn't matter. Even though the property is rental on August the 16th, Rather than Benjamin's principal residence, the sale qualifies during the five-year period from August 16, 2013 till August 16, 2018, he lived there at least two years. And that's all what matters. Okay, I understand. The last 11 months, it was a rental property. But you don't look at the last 12 months. You look at the past five years. Was the owner, did the owner live there two of the past five years? And if the answer is yes, they met the usage test. Okay, and if they own the property, they made the ownership test. Okay, so hopefully this will clarify uh, this sale of residence section 121. Now, if you have any other questions um, about this section, please email me. If you happen to visit my website for additional lectures, please consider donating. If you're studying for your CPA exam, study hard. This topic is covered, and this is a tax-free transaction. This is not tax deferred. Good luck, and see you on the other side.